Oh, you're going up first. Well, they tell me go get I'm starting. <laughs> you go get them. Premier here. Yeah, there you go. Go get them. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great pleasure today, on behalf of the Shaw family, to welcome you all here for the 175th anniversary of their arrival in this country. We are particularly, we're particularly delighted that Premier Ford is able to join us today. The agenda will have a number of short remarks by various people, but I'm just going to set a little bit of context about what 175 years means. It's really just a number, and if you say a century and a three quarters, it sounds longer. However, when the Shaw family arrived in Canada in 1847, they didn't arrive in Canada because there was no Canada. Confederation of this country didn't take place until 20 years after John and Barbara Shaw arrived. To give a little more context, south of the border in the United States, things were not very united. The Civil War, which destroyed the U.S. divisions, essentially didn't end until 18 years after the Shaw family arrived in this country. And back to our own area here, Renfrew County, we didn't become a county until 14 years after the Shaws first arrived here. These numbers may sound reasonably long, but for millennia before that, the Algonquin First Nation made this area their traditional home. At this point in time, I wish to acknowledge that we are gathered here on the unceded traditional territory of the Algonquin First Nation and behind us, about a kilometer away, is the great Ottawa River, the Kitchissippi. And on that river, our native Canadians, first here, spent millennia surviving, thriving in this area. It is my pleasure now to ask Chief Wendy Jocko of the Algonquins of Pickwakanagan to come to the podium. Dear friends, Shaw family, Premier Ford, honored guests, Pajoshan, Kakina, Kanizieg, Nongom, welcome and bienvenue to everyone here today. Anishinaabe Akin Ate Awaso Kikanawadijikan. This land we're upon is the traditional territory of the Algonquin people. It's a great honor and a pleasure to welcome you to Algonquin territory, which has been blessed by the Creator with many gifts particularly our magnificent forests filled with an abundant variety of tree and animal species. I would like to begin by thanking Herb Shaw and Sons for the invitation here today to, do to join you on this special occasion to celebrate your 175th anniversary. 1847 seems like such a long time ago. That was 20 years before my great-grandfather was born, Paul Jocko. He was born in 1867. Herb Shaw and Sons was established 26 years before the establishment of the Golden Lake Indian Reserve, band number 39, now known as the Algonquins of Pickwaknagon First Nation. Algonquins were encouraged to leave their traditional hunting grounds to make room for the logging boom and migrate to the only reserve in Ontario with Algon within Algonquin territory. Some took that opportunity to move and some did not. They remained on the territory to live as they always did, hunting, fishing, and trapping. Herb Shaw and Sons has employed many people over the 175 years of operations, including many Algonquin and Indigenous peoples, including my own father. I've heard many stories from my father 
of working in lumber camps, and he started when he was only 12 years old working for $1 a day. Stories of challenging work, laughter, campfire meals, and burning their long underwear in the spring, including log drives which claimed many lives, unfortunately. During World War II, my father joined the Forestry Corps and was posted to Scotland where he helped during the war effort. And I understand that Herb Shaw and Sons also hail from Bonnie, Scotland. It is a beautiful place, and I did live there for 10 years myself. I've seen the Scottish Highlands, which is remarkable, remarkably similar to the Ottawa Valley. The logging industry has transformed quiet Algonquin villages with modern birch bark dwellings. and businesses we know today. The logging industry has contributed to the population increases, cultural and economic growth of Ontario. The Ottawa Valley is a beautiful part of Algonquin territory in which to live, work and raise a family. I look forward to hearing more stories of your 175 years of successful operations. Congratulations to this in incredibly special occasion. Miigwech, thank you, merci beaucoup. Thank you, Chief Jocko. And I would draw your attention to the flag of Pickwakanagan directly above the big loader. And that is in honor of Wendy's attendance with us today. My next uh, task is to introduce uh, Rob Berardi who is the Vice President of Shared Services for Hydro One. And as you'll hear later in the presentations, Hydro One has been a very strong supporter of the crown jewel in the Shaw family legacy, namely the Shaw Woods Outdoor Education Center. In bringing you forward, we deliver our thanks once again for that support. Thank you, Fred. Um, I'm thrilled to join you here today on behalf of Hydro One to take part of this incredible milestone. Uh, it's both a privilege and an honour to be here. Ontario businesses are the backbone of our economy. They create jobs in the communities they operate in. They attract investments to the regions they serve. And they provide goods and services we all depend on. The demand for clean electricity is expected to grow significantly over the next decade. That's why we are making timely strategic investments that will benefit all our customers now and into the future. That includes continuing to purchase wooden electricity poles to renew our aging infrastructure. We know this would not be possible without the, un the support of Ontario's forestry sector. In fact, the material used to manufacture the poles we install come from the company that's hosting us here today, Herb Shaw and Sons. Herb Shaw and Sons, a family-owned business, has a long history of providing countless jobs and opportunities to the people of Pembroke, Petawawa, and across eastern Ontario. Congratulations on your 175th year in business, and thank you for your hard work and dedication in supporting Hydro One. Hydro One is building on the success of our partnerships to make new connections with Ontario-based suppliers at every opportunity we can. We've set a strong target for ourselves to source 5% of all materials and services from Indigenous businesses by 2026. And because of the partnerships with AOP, First Nations, and Herb Sons, we are on track on meeting that goal. Thank you and again for having me, and I'll pass it over to MPP Yakabuski. Thank you. <clears throat> well, thank you very much, uh, Rob, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, took 175 years to plan this event, so I'm glad you're enjoying it. Absolutely, you know, 
Chief Jocko touched on it a little bit, as did uh, MC Blackstein. 175 years, it's hard to even imagine uh, what the Shaws faced when they actually came here from Bonnie Scotland, as uh, ex-Mayor Sweet would say, Bonnie Scotland, absolutely. And how much this country has changed and how much they have been part of it and how many people have been impacted and affected by this family and the work that they do. And I say that the, the crowd that has joined us today is a testament to the feelings that the people of this valley have for the Shaw family and the work that they have done and the impact that their business has had on so many families over the years. I know Wendy spoke of her father working for Shaw's. How many other people's fathers have worked for Shaw's and mothers? It's amazing when you have that kind of history. So it's something that we all have to be proud of as, as people from the valley to have a, a company with that kind of longevity and that the generational succession to continue to forge ahead and do the kinds of things that are so important to us here and so important to our other forestry operators as well. But I'm just pleased to have so many of you here today to bring greetings to the Shahs, commemorate this tremendous anniversary. I want to thank Premier Ford for recognizing the importance of this as well. I mean, it is, it is not that often that you get a Premier and two ministers to come to an event, but we have them here today because they all see the importance of this, not only to the people of this valley, but to the people of Ontario. As Rob indicated, the impact of this business to a, a company like Hydro One that brings our electricity, delivers our electricity all across this province and uses Shaw lumber poles to get it there. I don't think it can be overstated, the tremendous contribution. And I've had the pleasure of knowing this family over the years, as did my father. And I'm proud to be here today as your local member to be able to share in this tremendous day. So thank you to the Shahs. Thank you to everyone who has worked for them over the years, everybody's contribution, and thank you to the people for being here today. God bless you all. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thanks, Yak. It's great to be oh, yeah. here on your, uh, on your turf. Just another job you haven't done, Yak. Hey, listen. <laughs> These people know, these people know what they're getting. I mean, what a, what a guy. Uh, John Yakubuski is the loudest voice in our caucus for rural Ontario. That's his tone and everything else that goes with it. But he's a great champion for, uh, for rural Ontario, particularly the area that we find ourselves in here today. And uh, thanks for arranging the weather, Yak. This is a beautiful, beautiful day here. And, Petawawa slash Pembroke, we're close. Um, it is great to be here with Premier Ford, and I want to offer my sincere congratulations to Herb Shaw and Sons on the outstanding achievement of 175 years in business, and knock on wood, many, many more in the future. As uh, the Minister of Energy for Ontario, I'm focused each and every day on ensuring a reliable and affordable and clean electricity system for all Ontarians. And after more than a century of use, wood utility poles are still the industry standard, allowing companies like Hydro One, as Rob said, to build a grid that can withstand the impacts of extreme weather, improving power resiliency and reliability for customers. And it's your commitment to quality here at Herb Shaw & Sons that makes it all possible. So thank you for all of your hard work to ensure that the power is always available where and when it's needed. And congratulations again on an incredible milestone, 175 years in business. And with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Kristen Shaw, and uh, she's going to tell us a little bit more about just how important this day is. Kristen, I'll turn it over to you. When it comes to giving speeches, I'm no politician, so please bear with me as I try to hit this out of the park. Thank you, Honorable Todd Smith, for that introduction, and thank you for all the speakers who not only took the time to be here today, but to also speak on behalf of business in Ontario and to celebrate the long-standing business, our business, from here in Ontario. Thank you also to MPP John Yakubuski. You're a man of the people. Thank you. <laughs> 
I'd like to thank those of you who made it a point to be here today in honor of the 175th year that the Shaw family has proudly been doing business in Canada, proudly been doing business in Ontario, and proudly been doing business in the Renfrew County. Specifically, at Lake Dory, the place where roots run deep for this family and continues to be a special place as it is now the location of the Shaw Woods Outdoor Education Center, which has welcomed over 4,000 students annually over the past 12 years. It prides us to be able to share and to promote outdoor learning and to allow young people the chance to experience nature. The hope is that the impact of nature will be far reaching. As mentioned, our roots run deep at Lake Dory. It is the place where it all started for this family and this business over 175 years ago. And today we want to honor these roots, our forefathers, my father and current working generation, and to speak about the future. The farther backward you can look, the far, far, further for, forward you can see. It is very important to know where you come from, to know where you're going. It was the opportunity, it was opportunity that made John Remickshaw I decide to leave Inverness, Scotland and drop roots in the upper Ottawa Valley in 1847. Moving to Lake Dory and establishing a water-powered sawmill and grist mill, John Shaw I set in motion what would become a family's legacy. This set the stage for six generations to continue what he started. The great abundance of natural resources in this area has allowed us to harvest timber and continually grow as a company, all because of the decision he made to move his family to what was then a rugged Ottawa Valley. The abundance of natural resources and the controlled manner in which harvesting has taken place over our six generations has allowed us to work some of the same areas a, a multitude of times, with generations of harvesting in these areas still to come. I want to mention that our industry, the forestry industry, is sometimes a fairly volatile one, one exemplified greatly of late. Over the last 175 years, despite these rises and falls in the industry, Herb Shaw and Sons maintains focus on certain things above others, which have been to do honest work, to do our part to contribute to our community, to provide employment for people in the community, and to help support families by doing business within the community. An article published in the Pembroke Observer in 1968 focuses on the purchase of Pine Ridge Lumber Company by Herb Shaw and Sons, a fairly significant event in the history of this company. The premise of the article isn't what made me copy it and hang it by my desk. What caused me to do so was that it shows the heart of the company. The article is full of Donaldisms. Donald was my grandfather and part of the fourth generation of Herb Shaw and Sons. He was a character, but most importantly, he had the skill for seeing things for what they really were. These examples are clearly depicted in this article. When asked about the state of the industry, his answer was fairly simple. He said in so many words, common sense will, will prevail. Do honest work and treat your people well. My favorite part of the article was when Donald was asked about the legislation and how lumbering in our area could be so negatively affected that moving out of the Ottawa Valley may be the best option for continued success. Donald's answer was again very simple and to the point. Excuse me. His reply wasn't the economic-based answer some would expect from a businessman, but rather he said, we look after our men, many of whom have been with us all their working years. We are concerned for them. Sure, we could move our industry out of the area, but you can't take 79 employees and their families with us. It is with these few quotes that I shed light on what it means, what means the most to us being a private business in the Ottawa Valley. We do honest work, we treat people well, and we hope that common sense prevails. So what does it take to not just run a business, but a family owned and operated business and be successful for 175 years? Success is an, isn't an outcome of being smarter. It is opportunity and the ability to seize it that turns these outcomes into success. We have the opportunity to conduct business in Ontario, where government works with private industry where the government recognizes the importance of creating opportunity for private industry to succeed. When private industry succeeds, people in Ontario succeed. Success is made on the backs of people who know how to work and who aren't afraid to do it. We, as a private business, have a continued aim for growth 
as growth within the company is far reaching. It means growth for our employees, for families, for our community, and for Ontario as a whole. With this said, it is now time that I introduce our Premier, Doug Ford, a businessman in his own right, a man who knows the importance of promoting business in Ontario and keeping business in Ontario. Premier, thank you for joining us today to celebrate 175 years of successful business here in Ontario. Well, good morning, everyone. And, and Kristen, you, you were reading those quotes out, and it reminded me of my dad talking as, as, as well as your grandfather told you and your father. And uh, before I start, I just want to, again, congratulate the Shaw family. 175 years, six generations. A lot of companies can't even make it through the second generation, not, not mentioning the six generations. But uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be back here in Petawawa in the beautiful Ottawa Valley. Valley, I should say. It's great to be here alongside Minister Todd Smith, Minister Graydon Smith, no relation, even though they look like brothers. And we got the whole Smith uh, clan down at Queen's Park. I think we have five of them or four of them. And PA Rick uh, Breeze and the one and only MPP John Yakabuski. I'll tell you, I'm going to tell you a little side story. He has been on to me every single day for the last year about coming here and and when, when uh, John speaks up, I'll tell you, everyone listens. He's a great guy. He's probably one of the most loved people down at Queen's Park, uh, almost as loved as he is in this community. And, you know, you talk about 175 years. I was thinking that's when you first got elected, Yak. And we affectionately call him Yak. And I know uh, Yak's family has a, a huge history here. I don't need to tell you that there is no bigger champion for Renfrew County than John is down at Queen's Park. I also want to thank uh, Rob Berardi. Thank you, Rob, for coming out here, doing a great job at Hydro uh, One. Fred uh, Blackstein, uh, Fred, thank you for being our, our host too. And uh, Chief Wendy Joko, thank you, Chief, and uh, thank you for everything that you do. Jocko, I should say. Uh, Kristen Shaw, well, we just heard from Kristen, and Mayor of Petawawa, Gary Service, Mayor of Pembroke, Ron Jarvis, Jervis, I should say, Warden of Renfrew County, Peter Eamon, and uh, the entire team here at Herb Shaw & Sons Lumber for hosting us here today. As you heard, Shaw is a huge provider of many of the hydro poles used around the province, and they're absolutely world class. They've been a staple in Petawawa, providing good jobs and building this community again for 175 years. That's an exceptional achievement, and we're so proud of their continued success and their role in building Ontario. Shaw is a major part of our government's historic effort to build up high-speed internet access right across this province, which is on track to bring reliable broadband internet service to every community in Ontario by 2025. As we work towards building all of Ontario for the future, we're investing $4 billion towards achieving that goal. The largest investment in connectivity infrastructure in Canadian history. And the results of this commitment are already being seen in communities throughout Ontario. Just this past August, we signed agreements through the accelerated high-speed internet program with eight internet service providers, companies, to bring improved access to up to 339 municipalities across Ontario. These municipalities were previously unserved or underserved in terms of online connectivity. And that means they didn't have access to the same opportunities that everyone in Ontario deserves. That's not acceptable, and we're fixing it with no delay. This is important for people and families in rural Ontario, but it's also massive for the many businesses that operate outside the big cities, because as so much of the global economy is moving online, we're leveling the playing field for all Ontario businesses to compete on the world stage. Whether you are based in Trenton or Timmins, Peterborough or Petawawa, it's all part of our government's plans to build Ontario from north to south, east to west, 
with nobody left behind. But my friends, we know there's more to do. We must stay focused and we can't take anything for granted. As we navigate global economic uncertainty, our government has been hard at work building an economy that can weather any storm, an economy that never loses sight of what's most important, helping people succeed, helping workers succeed. That starts with creating an economic conditions that attract investments and growth and good jobs. We've cut red tape to reduce the cost of doing business in Ontario by $7 billion annually. We've kept taxes for people and businesses low. We're investing in the skilled trades and a workforce that's prepared for the jobs of today and tomorrow. We're building roads and highways, and we're making investments to improve the province's competitive advantage and ensure that Ontario remains the greatest place anywhere to live, work, and raise a family. And while the world faces economic uncertainty and our challenges with inflation are not over, one thing I have complete confidence in are the people of Ontario. There are no harder working people on earth. And I know that together we will accomplish incredible things. Together we will build Ontario. Thank you and God bless the people of Ontario. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hi, Premier Dylan hi. Dyson, CTV Ottawa. Um, given the rise in flu and with hospitals so overwhelmed right now, do you have advice to Ontarians on how to manage this season right now? Yeah, go out and get your flu shot. That's the most important. I had a, a, a great conversation with Alex Munter over at CHEO. Uh, we're, we're almost doubling. Uh, the ICU capacity, pediatric ICU capacity, and again, I, I, I gave him a shout out every press conference. I'm going to give him. Uh, we're we're so blessed and fortunate. We have a leader uh, like Alex, uh, thinking outside the box, coming up with uh, great ideas. So go out there if you haven't got a flu shot, uh, go get one. And to follow up, given the near impossible task of finding cold and flu medication in pharmacies, does the province have a plan to? reassure families, parents that they can get medication when they need it? Well, the medication, that falls under the federal government. I know they're trying to do everything they can to to bring uh, medication in from the U.S. Uh, the, the problem was the labeling. Sounds crazy. I'm a label guy. I would have been having labels on there. But, you know, if we can get it in any language, it doesn't matter. The most important thing is getting the medication up here. So uh, the federal government has to continue working with the pharmaceutical companies on that. Great, thank you. Thank you. Premier Ford, uh, Katie Nicholson with uh, Hi, CBC Katie. National News. Uh, we are in Renfrew County. This yes. was where um, that triple femicide happened in 2015. We're coming up on the six-month mark of the uh, the inquest that made 86 recommendations, many of them to the province. I wonder if this is a, a good time for you to maybe speak to the province's commitment to meeting some of those recommendations on intimate partner violence. Well, you know, something that's unacceptable, any intimate uh, violence within uh, partners, and and uh, we're always there to help the community. And I, I know, uh, John, you've you've been close to that, and if you want to come up and say a few words, you're, you're welcome to, or um, by all means. Yeah, thanks for that, uh, Premier, and I've had a number of discussions with uh, many people on that subject, including, of course, people in here in Renfrew County but also, uh, pardon me, uh, with uh, Solicitor General Kersner as well. And he is very, very aware and is taking a close look at all of those recommendations. And uh, I expect that in the not too distant future, we'll be able to speak on the, the, the totality of them. Uh, and you know that in the past, I have uh, tried to pursue private members' bills on, on, some of those, on some of those issues. And we were all shocked. I, was, I remember being at the international plowing match on the day that that happened. And, and then uh, Solicitor General, or um, I guess he was Public Safety Commissioner, or, um, or Attorney General, maybe Yasser Nakvi, and we talked about it that day, uh, about what we were you know, going to be facing. And it, it is a terrible thing, uh, but I, I want to make sure that people understand that Minister Kirstner and our, ent our entire government is taking a close look at those recommendations and wants to speak uh, when, when they've had a chance to go through them all uh, so that, that they're, when, they, uh, when, they're, when they've completed that task, uh, there will be uh, answers and, and actions for, for coming forward. Thank you. 
Just one follow-up on uh, cell connectivity, which was uh, one of the recommendations to improve cellular connectivity in rural areas, particularly this one. Uh, I wonder uh, what progress uh, is, is being made working with, with uh, industry, working with, uh, with the federal government. Well, you know, we have made tremendous progress, and you know, we have a, a reverse auction going on, and Kinga Surma, our Minister of Infrastructure, is literally seized on the issue of bringing connectivity to all across to everyone in Ontario, as the Premier said in his address, by 2025, and that's not that far away. Uh, but uh, we have great partnerships with internet service providers, and each and every day, uh, more and more uh, progress is being made. Actual uh, physical um, implementation in one area at a t obviously, uh, you know, every area at the same time. But I am confident uh, it is a something that we're committed to. Our premier committed to that. In fact, here in Renfrew County, right. at the kickoff of our 2018 campaign. He kicked, off, he kicked off our campaign with that commitment to, to connect connectivity, uh, and we're confident that we'll be able to see through that. We know how important it is here in rural Ontario, everywhere I go. I mean, I see it myself every day, and I know that my guests that have driven through Renfrew County probably wonder why they dropped the call at one place or another. But, but this is a commitment, and this is one of our first projects, is to improve the cellular connectivity, but then we're going by 2025, we should be able to provide that internet connectivity to all homes as well here in Ontario. So thank you for that question. Debbie Christing, the Eganville leader. Hi, Premier Debbie. Ford, thanks for coming to the thank Ottawa you. Valley. And uh, we're very proud of a lot of things in the Ottawa Valley, including Herr Shaw and Sons and their wonderful history of innovation and yeah. growth. And we've also been able to have the Renfrew County VTAC here, which was also a pioneer in establishing virtual triage assessment during the uh, COVID pandemic. Yes. And uh, I'm just wondering what kind of ongoing commitment promise the province can give us to ensure that we have that access to primary health care, which is uh, a real need throughout Ontario, but especially in, in rural parts of Ontario like the Ottawa Valley. Yeah, thanks so much for uh, your, your question there. It's absolutely critical that we uh, never lose track of uh, rural Ontario making sure that they have the proper funding uh, to have uh, care right across the, the board. Uh, we've increased uh, health care spending $5.6 billion this budget, $5 billion before. We've added over 14,000 nurses just this year uh, alone. We're building medical universities uh, in Ontario for the first time in, in, in decades. Uh, we're going to continue making sure that uh, the, the needs and, and the re uh, requirements to keep all rural Ontario healthy follow-up just yeah. looking for uh, sustainable funding for these uh, primary health care programs that are so important for Renfrew County like Renfrew County VTech and we also have our community paramedicine program which has uh, been really world-class oh, and uh, made us so proud oh, yeah. we've got Chief Nolan here yeah. and uh, just uh, actually pushing as well for ongoing funding for that I've been a big uh, fan of Chief Nolan uh, uh, with the paramedicine program this Chief Nolan, even throughout the pandemic, was thinking outside the box. You know, I love our paramedics. They don't need to be told. They don't need to be directed. They just go and get the job done. And we saw that with the, the chief throughout the whole pandemic. So thank you so much. And uh, you're right, it's world class. We're always going to make sure that we're, we're funding that, but have sustainable funding, not this one-time uh, funding. And this is the conversation the Premier's had on, on Friday. We don't need one-time money from the federal government. They're giving us 22 percent. Uh, the provinces are paying 78 percent. That's not sustainable. We need to uh, make sure we sit down with the federal government and uh, put together a sustainable deal that we see continuous funding uh, moving forward for decades to come. And we, we've been asking the federal government for a meeting. Hopefully early in January we'll be able to sit down. Uh, we're asking for uh, a 35 percent increase and an incremental increase of 6% every year and $28 billion. Uh, we're paying our fair share. We need the federal government to pay their fair share. This will be the last question. Sure. Hi, Premier Rudy Hi. from IFM News. Hi, Rudy. I was just wondering, um, how does the province have a plan to continue to support the forestry sector so that companies like Herbshaw can, can continue for another 175 years and six generations? Oh, great question, and I'm going to hand it over to my expert, uh, uh, the minister, and Graydon Smith will answer that. 
Well, thank you, and, and, and thank you for the question. And absolutely, and you know, I'm I'm struck uh, by that that quote that uh, Kristen mentioned today about um, looking back. You know, helps us uh, look forward. And certainly in Ontario, we are looking forward. We have a forest sector strategy uh, that underlines the importance uh, of the forestry sector here in Ontario. I know there's a number of uh, folks from the industry here today to to help celebrate. Uh, we meet with them frequently. We talk frequently about how we can make sure that this historical industry in Ontario. Uh, is one that is very much about the future as well. Uh, we've got uh, great components as part of that strategy, like the Forest Biomass uh, Action Plan to uh, allow us to use uh, more uh, forest products and residuals to, to make sure that, again, this industry remains of um, you know, clean uh, and green Ontario. So I'm very excited about the forestry industry, not only today, but in the future of this province, and it'll be a big, big, big part of it for years to come. Thank you. And just to follow up, Premier, sure. uh, what are your thoughts on the facility here and getting to use some of the equipment earlier today? You know, it's pretty pretty amazing. People don't realize, you know, that live in the, the cities. If it wasn't for, for companies like Herb Shaw and Sons, uh, we wouldn't be able to do the connectivity. We wouldn't be able to get electricity from point A to point B. But this is what true entre uh, entrepreneurism does. It creates jobs. It supports our economy right across the province, keeps people connected. And uh, I come from a family business too, and I, I just again want to thank the Shaw family for 175 years of being in this community. Uh, they're a staple here, and uh, we're so grateful. Companies like that will always support Ontario-made products, and I'm just so proud of the, the entire family, and, and thank you. Thank you for everything that you do for all 15 million people in, in Ontario. We're very, very grateful, and God bless the Shaw family. They're absolute champions. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as we begin to conclude the event, and before the Shaw team of employees moves off, this is typical of the jobs provided, the type of people that work here. It's sort of like when the caterers come out after the beautiful meal to take a round of applause. So to the Shaw employees, to the Shaw family, thank you. And to all of you, just as we wrap up, I'd like to let you know that members of the Shaw family who are making their way to the side of the podium here will be uh, meeting with the Premier. And I always wanted to be adopted by them, but they, they kept rejecting it. So I'd like to just uh, make a few comments, and I will be in trouble for doing this. As soon as we conclude here, the Premier and members of his team are going to join members of the Shaw family in the office while they share a little bit more of the history. But what they won't share is what I'm going to share with you now. Everywhere you go in Renfrew County, whether it's a long-term care facility...